explore some technical aspects of this AppMaker event uh, manager solution. We picked four, uh, some that are straight out of uh, AppMaker's default playbook, uh, and some that we uh, actually imported some JavaScript and and uh, created some calculations and kind of extended what was what is natively there with an app maker. The first one I want to show you is uh, uh, popovers, which is a native functionality of uh, app maker, but one that m uh, not everybody may have uh, uh, got their head around or is using uh, to its best advantage. So in the events uh, uh, module. I go to events here, right? In the detail of that, we have this uh, ability to uh, import uh, people. Okay, let's say you have a spreadsheet online or something or other. Uh, when we click this, we get this nice sort of uh, dialog box that really grabs your attention and kind of walks the user through the process. Um, and uh, you'll notice that uh, you know if I click anywhere, it, it just kind of stays up. If I hit the escape key, of course, it still stays up. The only real way to uh, get rid of it is to hit the import button or to hit the X. So let's switch back to the uh, uh, developer area here and take a look at that. Now you'll notice, uh, unlike just the straight P, it's a, a P with a U. Uh, and uh, you can get that if you, if you just hit a new page and you select this pop-up. Okay. So if you pick the pop-up, you're going to uh, get this right out of the box. And it's just a normal page. just has a few uh, special things about it. Uh, one of those things is down here in the Properties uh, Editor in the main section. Uh, this is where you can define how it acts. Uh, so you can... Uh, 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 you can if you click this option here, click outside uh, to close. Uh, if you click anywhere outside of the uh, little white area here, the little little panel, it'll close. And of course, we had that turned off, if you noticed, because we want to kind of control the experience of the user. Um, navigate to close. Now, that's uh, another feature. That would, if we had that turned on, going to another uh, 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 page or, or view would also close this, but we really want to lock folks into uh, following this uh, wizard. Um, another here is escape to close, and again, that's not checked. Uh, if you hit the escape key, it, it's not going to close this thing. We really, there's only one way to do it, and that's we created a button here uh, to close it, and if you want to advance, you hit import. Now, the one thing uh, to get that nice to, to, to make this panel, or this page pop, uh, it has this option called has glass. And you, you can tell if you turn that off, turn it back on, this sort of a gray dimming of the background really uh, makes the dialog box uh, uh, pop up and look, uh, uh, really get the attention of the user. And although it's not a, uh, a, a huge uh, uh, productivity booster, it's kind of a neat deal and sort of opens the uh, window just a little bit into uh, how you style the look and feel of things uh, within AppMaker. And that is the, uh, uh, the spinner. So let's preview this thing. And so I preview, and you notice there we have a spinner here, and it changes color. This is the default Google spinner. We're not going to be changing that, but it gives you a, a, a good idea of what we're talking about. As we preview here, and again, we're not changing this one. We're changing this one up here. See how it goes from blue to gold? Well, uh, you'll see that in a couple different places here in the system. Uh, Google's pretty snappy, but you can see in the upper right here, kind of cycles through a couple different colors. It actually cycles between this blue and uh, this gold. So I'll show you how we did that. So let's uh, uh, select a page that might have a spinner on it.
So I'll select that spinner here. And it uh, looks like I went ahead and moved it, so I'm going to hit backspace because I don't wanna, actually don't want to move it. So uh, you'll notice that spinner there. And if you go up to the property and go to the styles editor, you can see what this fellow is called. Okay, it's called app spinner. Right? Uh, so from this point on, you don't have to uh, have any selected because we're not going to we're not going to define a style. We're not going to change the colors on the page level because we got these spinners all over the uh, application in, in any number of pages. Uh, so we're actually going to apply this to a uh, a, a global uh, theme. So if we go to, down to the section here called global styles, and these are all the styles that are are that we defined in this uh, application. But I want to zero in on on this fellow right here. And so again, the, the object is called an app spinner. And it's got a few uh, uh, different options here. And it actually has four sort of phases that goes with, goes through. And here you can define different colors. Here we define the blue. Here we define, define the gold. Then we change it back to blue. And then finally to gold. And it'll continue to cycle through there. And if you saw the Google, uh, it actually defines four different colors. We've only uh, defined two because uh, those are the major colors in our app, and it sort of cycles through there. Now, by default, um, it's going to have, and I'll type it out here, dot app uh, spinner. And you can see up here, I'll cycle through here, we've defined these but you can just define, hey, all the circles are the same. Go ahead and, and uh, uh, use that. And that's what it does by default. We actually went in here and added those others. If you do that, let me get rid of this part here. If you do that, and if we look at our preview again, anytime we uh, go to a list, you can see again, it's cycling through those colors. And since we put it in the global, it'll be affected uh, any um, uh, non-page specific uh, uh, spinner that's in our application, regardless of what page it happens to be on. If your uh, application you're making is uh, any way complex, you'll probably run into a requirement of something similar to this. So I'm going to navigate to an example we have of this feature in events. Let's go to a detail of event. If we click on the vendors tab, we're tracking expenses for given vendors. And we're, of course, totaling it up at the bottom. Uh, now, uh, if I delete this, this bottom $10 one, you'll notice that the total floats up and recalculates. If I add another one, ten dollars in there see this increments up to ten dollars as well as floating down you also notice that it doesn't show up at the bottom of invitees for example right it's only only shows up uh, in the vendors area so let me show you how we did that so here I am in dev uh, mode uh, on this page and the first thing I'm going to show you is the invisibility part. So if I select the widget, this is our total widget down here, you notice that it actually when we preview it, it's floating below these. But for this purpose, it's, uh, it's off to the side because we're, we've got a little JavaScript uh, that'll show you that, that puts it where it needs to go. Now, one little, little thing you might want to uh, 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 realize here is that if you have a panel or an object or something program, uh, programmatically, uh, invisible, right, based on a uh, condition. Uh, to see it, you'll have to make sure that you click the, uh, 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 the eyeball there so that you can actually see it. Otherwise, it'll be invisible when you go into uh, de dev mode uh, if, if the condition is uh, true. So, uh, also, it, it pertains uh, as well as the ones that you just turn off and turn on via the uh, outline. But this one hasn't turned off on off the outline rather. 
it's um, <clears throat> it's as I show you here and under display it's only visible if there are indeed items uh, in the uh, the length length of those items is uh, greater than zero than it actually shows and of course in dev mode it isn't so uh, it's invisible unless I click this so that's how we got that uh, to uh, only show up in the right time in the right place um, by uh, putting a, a visible calculation in the display to that now that's not the only thing we need to do we also have to then take this this fella and put it up where it needs to go right so if I click here I have an event that's on this this uh, object here that holds the rows um, and we'll take a look at that and that's an on load under events and what that does is it takes that element okay and it positions it relative to this upper row right? and it also only does it and you notice here if the condition is met that there is actual items in this area um, and you can see that it's uh, its position is relative um, and it's going to be below the other ch uh, child of this part so you might want to know how we found out kind of where it was uh, so here I'm back into preview mode and if I go to more tools and I open up the developer tools all right I have the developer tools open if I click on inspector here I can kind of get a sense of where I am so if I click on this it takes me to that div if I open that div I get another div below it which is just these this group and if I put one more I can see that here we have our our total div that's been inserted and here is our uh, row number div so with a little bit of uh, 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 inspection uh, a little bit of sleuthing you can uh, find out where this thing needs to be and use a little bit of JavaScript to put it where it's supposed to be nice neat feature uh, one that isn't necessarily native to AppMaker but because of AppMaker's flexibility you can pretty much do anything you want uh, if you can figure out how to do it and uh, I'll show you an example of something something we did right up that uh, alley so in this system we have uh, email templates okay so I'll go to this page and you'll see here we've got uh, uh, you can select a template there's invitations uh, here's the fields and, and preview what it looks like so in this situation we want to add uh, a merge field similar like you do in a, a, a word processor or what have you um, and so we want to put something right after sincerely okay and uh, we click here with our little cursor and let's just for the heck of it I'll put our website if I double click on our website actually I clicked a few mo too many times there so if you click on our website it inserts it right where it's supposed to be so if I can click here and I can click state and you can see it goes right in there uh, where it's supposed to be now this is not native functionality to uh, uh, and you can see up here right there it shows up sincerely our website if there's any date in there you'd see it uh, however uh, it's not something native in, in AppMaker but again you sh you should be able to do pretty much anything you want in AppMaker and we'll show you how we accomplish this I'll go back to dev <coughs> I happen to be on that screen at the moment now the one thing you need to, to, to have uh, right away uh, is some place to tell AppMaker where you are at a given point right so where that uh, you know what field are you in subject are you in body uh, you got to have a, a variable in place when you go into this uh, uh, screen or rather a, a property uh, uh, and we're going to define that at the page level so I've got a custom property here we went ahead and we added a, a custom property you can create a string or whatever whatever you want to do we created one called active widget okay and you'll see how we 
we're going to use that going forward here. So <clears throat> if we click on subject and body, two places we can actually put merge fields in, you can see we have a, an event attached to uh, uh, either one of those. Okay. Now, we don't have one for name, template, or what have you. But in subject and body, the two places where we can put merge fields, we have um, an event trigger. And that event trigger right, basically throws the name uh, into that uh, variable so you can use it later. Okay? And that later we'll be using it is actually on this button. Okay, so when you click... When you click this, all right, on click, so when you click a merge field, <coughs> it uses the active widget, the name of the active widget, and it goes in there, finds out where the cursor is, and then pastes uh, the, the text box uh, name in there with the appropriate uh, merge carrots on both sides. So uh, I'm not going to go in and explain all the details of this particular uh, JavaScript. You can copy and paste it. Just be know the important parts of it. How this, this works is the fact that it knows what the widget is because we defined uh, uh, when we entered those, those fields, it put the information into the active widget that was created, uh, property that was created when you entered this, uh, the uh, page and then it walks through figures out what the the object is that you just clicked on and puts them in chevron in the right place uh, where your cursor is in the right box be it subject or body